right, this is a matter of state of Connecticut versus Michelle Pinconis. A mother of five vanished. A love triangle and a shocking suicide all make up the case of Michelle Traconis, who will soon head to trial after years of courtroom battles. She's accused of conspiring to murder her lover's estranged wife, but she says she's innocent. You can do whatever you want, but I didn't do it. This marks the first time anyone's headed to trial for the murder of Jennifer Dulos. Because Dulos's husband and Traconis's lover, Fotis Dulos, died by suicide before his case went to trial. When officers responded, um, they could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Traconis's trial is set to begin next week, but the case as a whole started back in 2019 when 50 year old Jennifer Dulos disappeared. Dulos was last seen at about 8 o'clock in the morning on May 24, 2020. She just dropped her kids off at school in New Canaan, Connecticut, and was caught on her neighbor's security camera video when she returned home. It's important to note, at the time of her disappearance, Jennifer Dulos was going through divorce proceedings with her husband of 16 years, Fotis Dulos. Together, the pair shared five kids, and there had been some custody arguments before Jennifer vanished. She was reported missing in the evening of May 24th after missing several appointments and not responding to messages from her friends. The next day, an investigation began. On May 25th, 2019, the Connecticut State Police Western District Major Crime Squad was requested to look into the investigation of the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. While searching Jennifer's home, authorities found blood in her garage and kitchen. Tests later determined the blood belonged to both Jennifer and Fotis. Prosecutors say Fotis attacked and killed Jennifer. Security camera video from that morning showed Jennifer's car leaving her neighborhood, but investigators believe it was Fotis at the wheel, taking Jennifer's body out of the home. Her vehicle was found abandoned at a park several miles from her house, but Jennifer's body has never been recovered. Investigators later found damning security video of Fotis. They say shows him disposing of incriminating items. Video shows him grab a bag from the back of his truck and throw it away. Later, he takes what appears to be a car mat from the back of his truck and leaves it beside a nearby building. But Fotis wasn't the only person caught in the security camera video. It also shows Traconis wiping something on the ground as Fotis unloads the truck. Traconis says she did help Fotis clean up his truck in the days after Jennifer's disappearance, but she believed the mess was caused by a coffee spill. Her defense released this portion of her police interview to bolster that belief. And then he walked and he grabbed me, he gave me a piece of paper or a toilet, um, a paper towel, and I put it inside where I had the bag of cleaning the, what I was cleaning the house. Did, did you see spilled coffee? No, I didn't see that. Did you see a coffee cup? No, because I didn't look inside the car. Did the but paper towel smell I, like coffee? No, I didn't smell well, it. Well, it was still, you're holding that coffee sticks. But I, you know, I hold the paper towel, but I didn't smell it. I didn't see that. But even paper. still, you didn't smell coffee? No. You know how coffee is when you smell it, it sticks. Uh, yeah. You smell it. I, Traconis's attorney, John Showhorn, says there's an easy explanation for that security video. She went along for the ride. She was on the phone and or texting with family and others. She was chewing gum. She tried to throw it out the window. It got stuck on her finger. So she leaned forward to wipe it off. Wipe it off. When I read the, uh, when I watch another video where the, uh, where the officers are talking with Mr. Colangelo, they state that uh, she was picking gum off the ground. Again, there is no video that says that. In fact, Tacronis' defense alleges her involvement is a complete misrepresentation of evidence. The purpose was to show that in the third warrant, the uh, detective claimed that when, uh, that when Ms. Traconis said she was handed a piece of paper towel that uh, Mr. Dulos had used allegedly to clean the uh, seat inside the uh, Tacoma, that she said, and this is in the warrant, that she said it did not smell like coffee. Now, 
if the purpose of that was to suggest, well, if it doesn't smell like coffee, it must have smelled like something odd, such as, I don't know, blood, then that was a deliberate misrepresentation of fact, because what's clear, she said, I did not smell it. And, if she, and she gesticulated by showing she did not bring the paper towel up to her face. Now, I don't know what kind of coffee that detective may be drinking, but if you all try that yourself, you let coffee spill on a paper towel, it dries. It's simply brown stained paper towel. It doesn't smell like anything. So it's a deliberate misrepresentation, but that's just one. This is not our defense. This is to point out that whatever the government and the prosecutor was and the law enforcement agents were saying is simply to a certain extent untrue or misleading and therefore the case is weaker than when this judge signed the warrants. Fotis and Traconis were initially arrested in June 2019 and charged with tampering with evidence and hindering the prosecution. During a police interview on June 6th, Traconis denied any involvement. We still have the information. I'm going to help him, but I can want the whole world with you you want. I can take you to like the place, like the motor place. I can walk, I can spend a month breathe, with you breathe, guys. I can breathe. do whatever you want, but I didn't do it. In September 2019, the pair were arrested again, this time for tampering with evidence. But the big charges came about nine months after Jennifer's disappearance, when Fotis' attorney Kent Mahaney was also charged for allegedly attempting to pose as an alibi for his client. On May 25th, 2019, the Connecticut State Police Western District Major Crime Squad was requested to look into the investigation of the disappearance of Jennifer Dulos. On January 7th, 2020, Western District, in conjunction with Central District major crime detectives, were able to get enough evidence to affect the arrests of three following individuals. Photos Dulos, who was charged with murder, felony murder, and kidnapping with the court set bond of $6 million. Michelle Traconis, charged with conspiracy to commit murder, with a court set bond of $2 million. Kent Mowinney, charged with conspiracy to commit murder, also with a court set bond of $2 million. The following day, Traconis appeared in court for her arraignment. You do have the right to remain silent concerning these charges and these statements may could potentially be used against you in the court. You have the right to stop answering questions at any time and have an attorney present with you during questioning. You have the right, right to plead not guilty to these charges and elect a trial in front of a judge or a jury. You have the right to a public and speedy trial and at a trial you may confront and cross examine the witnesses against you, summon witnesses, testify on your own behalf and offer any defenses you may have. In any criminal trial, the state's burden to prove you guilty beyond all reasonable doubt. You are entitled to be represented by counsel. Is this a full appearance, Attorney Bowman? Yes. No. Okay. And you do have counsel in the counsel. Um, if you have any questions about your constitutional rights, you should bring them up um, at this time or speak to your lawyer. You should also be advised in the event you're not an American citizen that conviction for this offense could carry consequences of deportation, excluded from admission in the United States, or denial of naturalization, all pursuant to a federal immigration law. Traconis spent majority of her life in Venezuela, even reporting for ESPN throughout South America. At later court appearances, her mother testified that Traconis reported for ESPN in Spanish rather than English. This topic, Traconis' language of choice, proved to be a heated point of conversation between her defense and the prosecution. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney John Schoenhorn representing... Uh, Ms. Traconis today, I will note for the record that she's being assisted by the Spanish-speaking attorney. Which is a change from the other time she's been here. I believe, I'll just say this, Your Honor, although there may be some hint of cynicism in that statement. Uh, Ms. Traconis, is, her first language is not English, although I can communicate with her in English. I also communicate with her in Spanish, which I speak. And if we're going to do anything more technical than just stand in front of the court and, and enter pleas or whatnot, we felt it was better for purposes of this case 
that she have the assistance of an interpreter. She doesn't need every word translated, but I'm suggesting to the court that she does not necessarily follow everything 100%. Even still, Traconis's defense argued at future hearings that she had a strong connection with Connecticut, having lived there for several years before her arrests. I note, Your Honor, that although Ms. Traconis is not originally from Connecticut, she did live in Connecticut for two years, and yes, she did have ties to the community. Uh, she engaged in uh, regular activities with, with in, in Avon at the, uh, there is a, a ski, water skiing club there. She was a member there. She herself uh, was a, was, may still be, I think, but was a competitive water skier, both in North America and in South America. She does, she's living now with her mother here in, in, uh, in, in Connecticut. The trouble is, of course, even Mr. Dulos, when he was, placed on, on uh, house rest allowed to go out every day to work and to go shopping and take care of other sundries. Mr. Cronus has been on strict house arrest without the right to do that. All she can do is meet with her lawyer, go to medical appointments, and go to church. And I submit that based on what we represented and what we presented here, those conditions, if they were ever necessary, are no longer necessary. I ask the court to reduce and, and uh, do away with the, with the uh, house arrest. With the, we'll concede the condition that she should be restricted to Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New York. We include New York since, since her daughter goes to school out of state. She usually flies into the New York airports and she shouldn't have to seek permission and get a court order every time her daughter is going to come visit from out of state. Prosecutors pushed back, saying her main connections to the area were only through FOTUS. Uh, he said that she's been a resident of Connecticut for two years. That's correct. She's lived with FOTUS Dulos. Um, she, at some point in time, ended that relationship, but I did hear, Your Honor, that she was having contact with him through a third party. I'm still trying to confirm that. Following his murder charge, Fotis maintained his innocence. Just one day after this charge was announced, his defense attorney, Norm Pattis, told reporters Jennifer's disappearance was still a mystery. There are two types of cases. There are what happened and there are who done it. Um, we don't have, we don't, this doesn't rise to the level of who done it because we don't really know what happened. At the time, Fotis was released on $6 million bond. When he failed to appear for an emergency bond hearing on January 28th, first responders were sent to his Farmington, Connecticut home for a wellness check. Officers from the Farmington Police Department were asked to respond to Mr. Dulos' residence for a well-being check because he was late for a court appearance today. When officers responded, um, they could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Officers forced entry and immediately began to perform life-saving measures. Um, medics responded from the East Farmington Fire Department, Yukon Health, and AMR Ambulance to assist with those uh, life-saving measures. Dulos was taken to the hospital in critical condition after poisoning himself with carbon monoxide. Investigators later recovered a suicide note, reading in part, quote, I refuse to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. He also wrote, quote, I want it to be known that Michelle Traconis had nothing to do with Jennifer's disappearance, and neither did Kent Mahinney. Fotis was pronounced dead on January 30th, 2020. The next day, Traconis appeared in court, pleading not guilty. Her attorney refused to comment on Fotis' death. Uh, Michelle pled not guilty today on the most recent charges and asked for a jury. And until I've reviewed the material that were just given to me, and that's why I brought this large briefcase, I have no other comment because I don't know enough to say anything other than what I've said before. Michelle is innocent of these charges and we plan to fight them through the courts. Thank you very much. Can you share any reaction to the death of Fodis Dulos from Mr. Conus? Um, no, I would say that that's not appropriate. Mr. Conus, uh, right you. You In the nearly three years since Fotis' death, Traconis has maintained her innocence, her family even speaking out on her behalf. I just want to reinforce that uh, my sister is innocent and that I thank God uh, for today's baby steps. Um, I really thank him because I had the opportunity to come here and be together. We are a very 
united family and we will continue support, supporting her. Thank you and again, um, God bless us. In all, Traconis faces six charges, including conspiracy to commit murder, hindering the prosecution and multiple counts of tampering with evidence and conspiracy to tamper with evidence. She's pleaded not guilty. Opening statements are slated to begin this week, and the trial itself is expected to last for six weeks. For complete gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the case, make sure to subscribe to our Law & Crime YouTube page. Reporting for Law & Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.